Sairam. Okay, it's a bit more enthusiastic, Sairam. Sairam. After lunch, you can say that. given by Brother Ravi, your president, the smartest thing I can do is to go home now. <laughs> because if you are such a high this thing, you know, that if I say everything else, I already come down. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you very much. I'm off. Okay, that's it. Enough. But now three days, what am I going to do? Fill up the time. Okay. How many of you here have heard me speak before? Oh, how many of you have not heard me speak before? Where have you all been? <laughs> okay, now don't answer the question. <laughs> Could be embarrassing. <laughs> the youth, how many of you heard me speak before? How many have not heard me speak before? Oh, okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> so, dear brothers and sisters, we, it's very interesting what you've chosen the word love thy neighbors, love thyself on this day of the Good Friday, conveying in really a message that Christ has been conveying to us. And also, the interesting, when we in Malaysia, we call it sadhana camps, okay? But here we, we, we call it retreats. Actually, it, the retreat is meant to go forward, you know? So the retreat actually, very interesting, the retreat into yourself, not retreat from life, to retreat into yourself so that you can go forward. It's actually the same meaning as religion, really got it, going back to your origin. So you, you end up this session, three days, all of us have gone back to origin, at least have the aspiration, then we have, the retreat has succeeded. So this is a great challenge, you know, facing all of us. So what I'd like to do is, uh, some of you who know me, And uh, I normally start with a song, and in between I'll be singing songs. So I'm glad that all the experts are here. Uh, so let me what, uh, start by, I need God's support to do this kind of work. So let me just invoke, remove obstacles. Ah, huh, is that okay? Three ohms.
meaning of this one. If I give my love to one and all, Nayakam Devam, I know your hope of love will bind me, Lord. What's the meaning of that one? Only Hindus reply. You see, this is the problem now. What, what, what is Sanji Jaga bringing a hope inside? You know, one of the reasons why here I'm standing here now, going around the world, talking about religion, talking about God, talking about my, my religion, everything, you know. But some of you, how many of you here below 32 years old? Below 32. Don't be shy. It's okay to be below 32. Some of them are putting up hands, looking up. <laughs> well, let me worship you, okay? All of you. Because when I was below 32, I never come to a function like this. You're going to a religious function, listen to the people talking about God and what's wrong with mad fellows. Don't you anything better to do? I'm an atheist. You know what an atheist? Agnostic. I didn't believe in God. I used to condemn divinity. I used to condemn religion. Until 32 years old. So for the all of you are here, you know, you're incredible. I really worship the fact all of you are here. And uh, why was I such a atheist? Because no one could explain to me anything about my religion. Ganesha holds in his hands two things. One is Ankusha. And at the end of the time, we talked about talk about that. But the second hand is the rope, Pasat Thayra they call. Pasat Thayra. Pasat is rope. He is holding the rope of love. The message there is that Swami himself said this. God actually wants to bind us with his rope of love. But you must come to him before he can bind you. If the elephant is in the jungle, the mahout who drives it can't do anything with the elephant. Only the elephant comes to the in contact with the mahout can the mahout guide the elephant with the rope of love. So all of us now, only if we give love to one and all, so coming to God is what? Where can you find God to go and give it to you? See, if you love one and all, then we come into His rope of love. And that is love thy message, love thy neighbors, love thyself. So this is the inner significance of this song. Anyhow, so, um, but today is Good Friday. <coughs> so, and this, the whole world is now dedicating this message to Jesus. On the great lights. You know, in fact, I once I was addressing, I was asked to address the seminary theology. I've addressed a number of big Christian groups in Malaysia. Once, in fact, I was addressed, I was asked to address in the church itself. When I address seminary theology, it consists of all the guys who are going to become priests in the future. And I told them, and here's a word a Hindu, Sahidi, who keeps talking about Jesus. He asked me to talk about my perception of Jesus. I said, don't you realize that Jesus was the greatest phenomenon the world has ever seen? Why? I tell you. There are other great lights in the world. But Jesus was there in uh, his area, Palestine area, whatever. Then there was the last chase of Christ. Fifteen or something he left. He came back at thirty. He preached for 30, 31, 33 years of the preaching. You know? And his mission is such worldwide. There's no other God man who only preached three years. And the message came such a fantastic universal message. But how did he succeed? Jesus did not go to Malaysia or Japan or America anywhere. Jesus' disciples took his message. The disciples of Jesus made his message a universal message. And there were only 11 of them. 11! Fantastic! Baba has millions of devotees, you know. And the next question is to go on there and mention Baba's name, you know, like cult. Hey, what's happening? Where is the fire that lit the hearts of the disciples of Jesus that made the universal message? Where is the fire that must ignite the world for Swami's message? Not that we want Swami, the people to become Baba devotees. 
This is the last thing I want in my life. One day I was addressing a big group of Hindus, they asked me to address an Hindu session. They all knew I'm, I'm a Baba devotee. So the people who are organizers told me, Gaga, don't mention anything about Baba. Yeah. They know you're a Baba devotee, so don't mention everything you're trying to convert them. So I went to the front, I said, Dear brothers and sisters, I must tell you one thing, I've been asked not to mention Baba's name. <laughs> so don't understand it, okay? <laughs> However, you know, I mean, I'm Hinduism, Madha, Pita, Guru, Dev, he's my Guru, you know, so excellently I mentioned his name, but me, okay? So during the course of the session, every time I mentioned, excellently I mentioned Baba, I said, oh, oh, sorry, 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 I'll do this, you know? So that broke the ice, okay? <laughs> so, like that, I did you know, we, I told, then I told the people, listen, one thing I tell you, I'm here, but I don't want all of you to become Baba devotees, I said. They were pitched they looked at me, even the organizer looked at me. I don't know, because you know, I said, enough Baba devotees not following his teachings. Don't add to the numbers. Not you, I've done other people. The chairman standing at me, the president standing at me. I said, there's not, <laughs> enough Baba devotees not following his teachings. Don't add to the numbers. Become a good Hindu, that's good enough. Hindus become better Hindus, Christians better Hindus. That's his main message, you know. And what does it mean that? They love all, serve all, help ever, hurt never. That's it, you know, bhakti yoga, karma yoga, that's it. Nothing else. So today, being this day dedicated to Jesus, I thought it's appropriate that I invoke a song for Jesus before I proceed. Supposing Christ was here today, what is the message he will give us? We are looking for divinity outside. We say, look for divinity within you. We are looking for love outside. Look for the love within you. Only with love within you, you can give others. So this song is dedicated to you. Can I see love before me?
the sun. You curse the flower, so you wish like you. You praise it also, you wish like you. Can you be like that? Christ was like that. On the cross, he is forgiven that forgive them a lot, they do not want to do. Swami himself has always been like that. People who condemn him, ah, he said, it doesn't matter. He says, those people, the two, two groups, one is standing one side, praising me, other side, people have been talking bad about Swami. I stand in the middle, blessing both. Can we do that? That's the kind of divine thing that Swami wants us to achieve. So dear friends, so much for songs, and we can't go on only three more day. By the way, we can't play instruments, we have beautiful, beautiful songs. First time, we're hearing this, okay? Especially the Armenian people, now he gets the tune, so he must catch it, you know? The dogs are somehow getting me without a can, the keyboard people. Thank you very much. The guitar person. Okay. Thanks a lot. Big hand. Big hand. Thank you. The uh, theme of today's uh, session is, is this Spice Pajuri, the size main message. Actually, I had something else on initially when I spoke to him, uh, Ravi, about his mission and vision. But I thought, hold on, hold on, let's understand what Swami's message is first. He did really, Swami's message is like an ocean. But we did not drink the whole ocean. So I'm going to give you in the next few days, just few drops of the ocean here and there, for so that we can remember. So this is what we're trying to do. <coughs> Before that, I'm oh sorry, one more song. The song is this. When Swami's Mahasamadhi took place, the whole world was stunned. How can it happen? And there was a huge, everyone was put into valley of sorrow. Many rushed to India. Everyone expected me to rush to India also. I said, I did not do that. I stayed in Malaysia with Bagi. I realized that I need to be in Malaysia to give some answers and comfort to the devotees who were there. So within one week after Swami Swami's Mahasamadhi, we had a huge conference. About 3,000 people packed the hall. And many of them, non sai people came to listen to what the message gave. We had religious leaders who have been working with, you know, for many years. They were there on the front, on the main aisle to talk about, to give dedication to Swami. And actually, I never shed a tear when Swami passed away. I was so busy trying to see what I can do. Let it, his avatar has come, I'm not there. He's, he has never left me. He has never left me. I'm not sitting in Puerto Rico 24 hours a day. Most of the time in Malaysia. So I must hold him to me in Malaysia to see what I'm doing. So we left him Swami, okay, fine. You are still me, not worry. Then <coughs> came this session we had in KL with all the religious leaders there. And this Muslim lady, wearing the traditional Muslim lady, she was a lecturer in the university on Islam. She came on stage, and I was sitting in front, and she said, Why are you all morning? We were stunned, okay? Here the lady coming to our office, our function where we dedicated to Swami this past day. Why are you all morning? Where do you think this great man has gone? He has left his home, his body, and now he is in your home, in your body. You must understand this. We were stunned. Okay, tears came my eyes. The Muslim lady is winding us now. Where Swami lady is? He is within us now. So now, to contact Swami, we need not be a Ravi Rudra sitting on the veranda. Swami will come to those days. Now Swami is level. He is equal to everybody. Everybody can plug in. Those days only the guys sitting in the van there, Swami will come and talk to. Now everybody is equal. Up to us to tap into him. Now he equalized the world. So he is with us. <coughs> so when I, in this period when I was actually going through this thing, you know, I would have to comfort myself, okay, before I could comfort others. 
So he said, I went up, went up on stage and I said, Ma'am, you've done a great disservice to me. For the first, you brought tears to my eyes. Because here the Muslim lady understood a great message. But Swami normally gives me great comfort in my own way when I face a lot of troubles in my life or challenges. Through songs, He comforts me. So this is a song that came, the first song that came after Mahasamadhi. This is Mahasamadhi song. <clears throat> How can I love you more, dear Sai? How can I love you more, dear Sai? Than I have loved you.
Try to see Swami. When the breeze touches you, there's distance. The twinkling of the stars, the moon, the sun, nature. This is what we talk about Brahman. The Vedas they talk about all pervading Brahman exactly like this. That's why, and especially in the hearts. So, devotees, the how factor, how the transformation is going to take place, we can talk about now. I would also like to add the when factor, when are we going to transform? Because how and when? Hey, now we are very young, you know, we can wait till later and we get involved. So when the people tell me that, they give me the certificate. What certificate? Certificate, you can tell me that you going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> How many fellas in the mortuary thought they would be here today? <laughs> it has nothing to do with age, you know. Uh, two years old, three years old, ten years old, fifteen years old, fifteen years old, hundred years old, all in the mortuary. So no one can say when you going to go. So the time is now. Whatever happens, the first step in the Savana camp is this. Whatever happens, no complaints. The retreat, no accommodation, food, if you complain, you are failed. See, every retreat I find, the retreat always succeeds. Devotees fail. Devotees fail. Retreats always succeed. They go back complaining about this, complaining about that, fighting about that, but <laughs> all wasted. You really retreat. Instead of taking the heart, you really treat it. So, one thing now, never say anything bad, never say anything negative, always somehow struggle to say good, you know, you better to say negative, you know, people enjoy saying negative, you know. So, let's see if we can struggle to say always good, good. Even the food is lovely, you say, oh, fantastic food. Right <laughs> food will be good. <laughs> now, let's see the ladies telling me. How can you say the food is lovely? So, retreat means advance. Only complain about speaker, the lousy speech you gave me. It will help you to improve, okay? <laughs> now we are well on the way to inner transformation. If you are always able to say good, that's the greatest step towards inner transformation. That's it. See, being, getting more shy always nothing, nothing to do, but actually very complicated. I'll tell you about it later. I'll tell you too early about moksha, then all of you just like, dematerialize them. Call the MP and I won't be addressing you. <laughs> Inner transformation. Sai's entire life message, his speeches, his writings, all about ending inner transformation. That's all. Jika, what about the same I was going to do outside and do? Yes, outer thing you do is only a manifesting inner transformation. That's all. The outer things we do are purely a manifestation of inner transformation we are supposed to achieve. That's a simple message. If you all just sincerely follow these teachings, you have enough knowledge to get moksha five times over. Do you know that? If we follow Swami's teachings, we get five times moksha. That's why nowadays some people know, as you know, they, and this hall be empty. So I always tell people, please, whatever I tell you all today, don't follow what I tell you. Continue with the backbiting and complaining and fighting and fighting the husband, fighting with the wife, fighting with children, with the other. Please continue. Because if you don't do that, then I'll never be invited again. Because Rabbi Yukran, after you left, the whole center is empty, all get moksha with you. <laughs> so please, if once a year, one person gets moksha good enough. The question is, do you really want to follow his teaching? That's all. Do you really want to follow? That's simple as that. It is not very complicated. Do you want to follow? So, especially the young, youngsters here, you, have, you actually the session here, more for this, this, these are the future. How many here below 50 years old? Below 50. That's it. This session is for you. You are the <laughs> Not that I'm for others. <laughs> but, you are the future leaders of this organization, no? You are the future leaders. Tomorrow I am gone. You know. Many others will have disappeared. But who is going to hold the ball to fly and make it higher and higher and higher? You guys. But to do that, you will make 
make sure that you become like gods walking on earth. That's the vision you must have. I tell people, you must dare to be divine. You must dare to be divine. Walk like gods on earth. People in your office, she ask you, wow, how come you're so different? Well, don't tell me immediately. Why are you so different? Everybody like you. Baba. Like a person on James Bond. And I say, don't sit there. What do you mean? Keep the camera up there. After five times, I ask you, Baba. Say Baba. So many sadhana came. Not only here, I know all over the world. Camps, retreats, conventions have had it. What are the results? But let us not lose heart, okay? One more time, Maha. Okay. <laughs> if every sadhana camp, every retreat, we keep back, give away one bad quality is going on. So by the time you know, when you are under these looks, only what you know, give away. Okay, so sorry, sorry, give away. No problem. Nobody expects you just to give away everything. How to give away? Make it simple. Not what Jaya says, you know. What does he know? Malaysian fellow coming here from a developing country. We are a developed country. What does he mean? So let us, whatever I'm going to tell you now, what Swami has said, okay? We can take glimpses of what message from him. That's his side, what Sai says. He gave us ten principles. You know ten principles? You heard about that? Hello? You heard about ten principles? I will not ask you what the ten principles are. <laughs> you know, you get very upset with me. So Baba gave ten principles. Then he said the ten principles are now very difficult for you. Let me give them nine. He reduced it to nine. <laughs> nine, my God, I've done that. Okay, nine. So special, special camps I have nowadays to see how to implement nine code of conduct. How to implement speak softly and lovingly. Can't help for that. Okay? How to implement never talk to others behind their back? I used to wonder about that. You know, one day, many years ago, Uncle Vitalas Shah was the world president. I was invited to a big Sai world, world conference in Putabi. Leaders, all the leaders were there. We were above this, this Bajabi canteen, you know, all, all packed. And I was supposed to talk to nine quarter of So I got up. I started like this. As a dear brothers and sisters, fantastic, nine code of conduct. How many of you uh, know about the nine code of conduct? Every hand came up, you know. Fantastic, put your hands down. Now, I'm going to ask again. Put your hand up, you come up here and tell us what the nine code of conduct are. How many of you know the nine code of conduct? Two hands came up. <laughs> I said, Uncle Lila, that is my case. If the leaders don't know the nine code of conduct, how can we contribute to the devotees? So this is the thing now, I don't know. So, but some chasai is going to be the fantasy for us. In fact, all of you are, but we, some most fantasy in others. One day, one day, he came and told me, Jaga, the Swami's name code of conduct. Fantastic! I said, yeah. Why suddenly you tell me, you know, Baba says, don't talk ill of others behind your back. Yes. I went and told this fellow in front of his face, you know, what I think of him. I told him in his face what I think of him. I see. But you know the, the, the one that comes after that or before that? <laughs> no, Baba says, you know one enough. No? <laughs> so the one before that is, always speak softly and lovingly. <laughs> you see how psychologists can turn the entire message around, I can tell you. Anyhow, so like, so then, from <laughs> 10 to 9, the 9 reduced to 8. In future camps, you know, we'll have seven, five, six, four, like that, no? We reduce the number of uh, things, you know, no? Until we reach zero, then we all go up you know? So that's an attempt we can do now. But can even the avatar of the Kali Yuga transform us? Watch this heretical statement I make. Can even the avatar of this Kali Yuga transform the devotees? But what Bhagavan 
Baba has said once, he said, pleading like a mother, pleading like a mother, Baba said this, addressed this to foreign devotees who come to Puttapati, inside the Prashanti Mandir, the Mandir, the prayer hall, he addressed all of them in the Mandir, foreign devotees. You know what he said? He said, these incredible words, he said, this hand of mine, this hand of mine can transform gold, can transform earth into diamond, into gold. This hand of mine can transform rock into diamonds. But this hand, this hand of mine can change earth into heaven, heaven to earth. But this hand of mine cannot turn your heart to God. <coughs> that was something you know, to me. When I read that, I was not there, but when I read that, my God. The purpose of his avatar coming here is to transform men to the hands of God. Now he is telling he can't turn the hands of God. What does he mean? What does that mean? Powerful message here. That means, tell you what it is. The fact that you moved your body from Australia or America or Malaysia to Puttapati doesn't mean you are transformed, you turn your heart to God. That means you want to take your money enough to buy that island to get it so. That means also that the fact that you move your body from your house to a size center and back doesn't mean transform your heart, transform your heart to God. That you physically know what is happening inside you. That must, we must, it must come from ourselves. He can only show the guy the path. We must walk the path. He cannot carry us along the path. So then, this is Baba like a mother pleading, I can't do this, I can't transform your heart to God. Then the same avatar, standing in his cosmic glory, as omnipresent, omniscient, divine, he has said the following words. The incredible words he said. This was told to me by Professor Kasturi once. And I talked to him, I talked to him, I talked to him, I talked to him, I very, very close to me. He told me, oh, how did you, when I first met him, tell me about what you, how you feel that Swami is divine. He said, when I was just joining Swami, and one of his relations or somebody passed away. So I went to Puttaputi and I was there. And Swami is sitting there, the person's body was there. And everybody was crying. All oh, he said, the exact words Kasturi was saying was, "I was surrounded by a sea of sorrow." You know, Kasturi is very, very nice in his language. And as I standing there watching everybody crying, Baba is sitting there quite unconcerned. I was affected by the tears of the others, and a tear I knew this man had passed away, and a tear trickled down my eye. Baba said, "Hey, Kasturi." Why these tears? I, if there is no birth and no death, how can I pass my time? Can you imagine these words, okay? Only God or absolute madman will say this. If there is no birth and no death, how can I pass my time? The only other person who said words in full was Krishna. Then, then, he says, you are divine. Tattam Asi. He said, even this word Tattam Asi is not Advaita. Can you imagine? We always think that Tattam Asi is, is, is Advaita. You no, know, I am I. Ta, that am I. Also possible duality. I am I. Is that different from the Vedas? No. In the next one, Aham Brahmasmi is what he said talking about. Aham Brahmasmi. Aham I am Brahma. That is I am I. There's a movie that came out, you know, called Nan, the Tamil Sulu was in the Nan, Nani Kadalu. Anyone saw this? One person. You all don't see movies. Now one person. See all these people see movies, others don't see all the only balance. <laughs> Prayers, bringing covenant. Movie called, this movie called Nane Kadalu. And below that, no one's noticed that. I wonder if they noticed this. The Nane Kadalu, big Tamil words, and then below this, Aham Brahma speaking, saying, conveying the message I am. Then Swami says, This is what is main message to all of us. My darshan must flow to you and through you to the world. 
have this burnt in your heart and mind. Now the Swami is physically not there. So how will people contact him? See him. My darshan must flow to you and through you to the world. When people see you. They must see this universal love, this compassion, this peace. Can we manifest that? That's his expectation. Can you imagine now? Once he's saying my heart, I cannot transform my heart to God. But his expectation is this. That my darshan must flow to you and through you to the world. So, somebody that day at one conference I was asking, everybody looking for Premasai, Premasai, I tell you, I know where Premasai is, I said. So everybody is coming. You don't see Premasai? I'll tell you what, look at the mirror. That is where Premasai should be. You should be Premasai. You should be Premasai. All of us should be famous. And that's what it's come here for. The Satya Sai has come here to transform us into famous. So my darshan must go to you and through you to the world. So can we? The question is can we? Do we dare to be divine? Question yourself again and again. Do you dare to be divine? That means you must give up all these negative things. But that's so difficult, you know. Yo, negative is so nice. People, you think, you know, when people talk bad about someone, do you think they, 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 are, they feel bad? No, they feel good to know, wow, I am a useless man. I am so good. The person is talking bad about others. <laughs> the person is talking bad about others. You are doing it yourself. You know? So it's so wonderful to talk bad. It's so painful to talk good. The pain will undergo transformation. Can we dare to be divine? That is the question I always ask myself. Swami, do I dare to be divine? Tattvamasi is not a message for space. Tattvamasi is a message for us. We say, you know, the, the priest, they give the yagna, 
Yaknadeshe mantram pushpam samatpayami. The fall of flowers in the middle of the flame, okay? Huh? So we offer God's flowers back to him. We offer the God's flowers back to him. And he says, mantram pushpam samatpayami. But today, can we offer Paramatma? Eight flowers that are our own, that is our own, that God has, we have cultivated. What are they? Eight flowers of worship. I'm not going to be details on this now. Answer number one, Ayusa. All of you know that. Non-violation. What is non-violation? Not, you see, the hitting at the person is only one small aspect of non-violation. Non-violation of thought, word, and deed. Do not think negative. Do not speak negative. Do not negative. Not because you're not hitting other people, not because I am size, thought, word, and deed. Do not violate nature, that's I am sad. When you pollute and pollution is I am sad. It's him sad. Pollution is him sad. Ah, A is negative. A which makes the him sad violation is I am sad. Non-violation. Nature, animals, all that is I am sad, not just hitting other person. Second, Indra Ganetigram. Sense control. I'm, to, I'm not going to go into details of this, okay, but the time will take too much time. But I just, just put sense control. Okay, like the Mushika. Mushika in front of Ganapati. What the Mushika is right? He's staying there, holding food in his hand, lot of food around. But the Mushika is not moving, you know. Only between uh, which that will be quiet with all the food there. Be like that. Control. Come near God, control, control, control. Sarva Buddha Daya, compassion to all beings. The third flower of the God. Compassion. There's a different word, a difference between compassion and pity. Pity is what, you know, somebody falls down on the ground in front of you, you go down. That's feeling pity. Compassion is what? You know there are poor people around, you know there are desperate people need to go and seek the need and give it to them. That is compassion. That is compassion. I tell in Malaysia, I told around the world, let us not do service of convenience. Ah, nearby all folks home, let us do and come back now. That's what don't need the happiness. Go and seek those who are so needy, so desperate, no one, so dirty, so far away, so difficult that no one else goes. Go there. That is compassion. And when you give that for whatever you are offering to them, they need, they will raise their hand and say, thank you, only God has sent you. Some homes, you know, are served by so many people. In fact, in Malaysia, there's a home run by a lady, our little Mother Teresa home called Mother Mandala. So many people have gone and give things there that sometimes she one day she calls me, you can't come, come. She went, come in. She went to the door, room and opened the door. Full of clothing in the room. Said, what is the mother? They go, people come and dump all the clothing in, you don't need, you know. You know, so can you please take it to others? Because they cannot, they will refuse. If they refuse, then people will think, ah, you're too big enough. So like that, it's a very interesting thing that now that the person you are trying to serve is not being inconvenienced by the service of it. Shama, forbearance. I know, forbearance, come on, give me a break, la. forbearance of the people. You know. mean the floor talks bad about me, I must forgive him. Chee, easy to condemn. How do I forbearance? Huh? This is today's message of Christ. Forgive them all out. They know not what they do. How many of us will do that? Someone talks bad about us. No one says, forgive them all out. Lord, punish the idiot. Thank you. Won't break and open extra coconut only for that. Five, Shanti, economy, peace. Shanti is not just peace, not the job, the the what time happens in life? Whatever happens, thy will be done. Happiness, sorrow, thy will be done. Baba says, you know, one day in his speech, he said, Take whatever happens as my grace. Misfortune, this, that, everything, whatever is my grace. So you can imagine a new devotee, somebody later to Baba's teaching, Baba's great, he helped everyone. Then he comes to the center, Sai Center, first time, and the chairman says, he gets up, he the message, you know, says, Baba says, you know, Take whatever happens in your life as my grace, whatever suffering is my grace. Differently, my God. Swami, can you give that grace to somebody else? <laughs> you know. 
So what is the meaning of that? I would like to explain that example. What is the meaning of Swami says? If it varies as to be The Swami says, what are my days? How can that be? Does it make sense? Okay, if I win a lottery ticket, it's great. Okay. You get a new car, new house, my grave. How can something negative happen to me? My son is getting sick or some tragedy, I lost losing my job, how can that be his grace? Tapas. What is tapas? Cleansing of mind. We pure thought. Not tapas not going leaving, going to Himalayas or the forest. Cleansing your mind with impure thoughts. Harmonizing thought toward the deed. What, what was called Trikarna Sutti. Sixth flower. Seventh flower. The Mahatma is one, Baba says, this, this tapas, is one whose thoughts, words and deeds are harmonious in one. That's a Mahatma. The thoughts, words and deeds are harmonious. Of course, there are good thoughts. Good thoughts, good words and deeds. That is a Mahatma. Next is seventh flower of dhyana, meditation. Meditation is anybody is not sitting in a posture you know, and trying to awaken the Kundalini Shakti. Meditation is not a posture of the body. Meditation is a state of mind. 24 hours a day can you be in a state of mind. Right? Always at peace. Whatever happens, peace. That's meditation is a state of mind. Not a position of the body. The person of the body may this little temporary period just to get you the feel of it. Through dhyana, Swami says, recognizing the presence of God everywhere and manifesting that awareness, spiritual awareness, every bit of everything you do is God. For God. Totally consciousness, dignity. Example, before we begin work, in an office of Arabia. Just one sign and bring your work, please. One day I went to work, I was having interviews and I had a lot of questions on a piece of paper. So I went to Swami, it's some family matters, Swami, and asked him, so I went to one, two, three, then Swami, now I asked ask some spiritual question. I said, hey, what spiritual? Everything is spiritual. Something I think for family, we think all, everything is spiritual. Then, Krishna Vishwaru, whole creation existent within you. The feeling should be, Baba says, not that God belongs to you. Very interesting. To say God belongs to you, this is ego. The Pandavas, he says, felt like this. Krishna is belong to us. They won the war, but this pride attitude brought you on destruction. You know, the Pandavas, the entire Yadava community for the story. Baba says, the, the, the concept should be, you belong to God. So I belong mean, to you. Parapatti, like Gopikas, Roto Sahana. So can we achieve that? Hey, Satya, truth. Speak me the truth always. But, Laukika Satya, now, lower order. How do you have a great spiritual truth? Understand that God is one, everything is divinity. To the deeper, changeless. What is changeless in the course of three course of time? Past, present, future. That is God. That is truth. Satya. Truth really means God. Truth is one. This is, this is the highest thinking. I mean, speak the truth, speak in God's words. In all the eight, how come there's no mention of love and faith? This is the imagine eight flowers, no mention of love and faith. Why? Love and faith is based on all the foundation. If no love and faith, you should not offer flowers from the garden. If there is no love and faith, you would not offer the flowers from the garden. Without love and faith, you would not offer flowers of virtues. This is Guru Arjuna. Love and faith. Basically, it is pure Bhakti Yoga. Now, for those who find the eight a bit too much, you know, ah, yo, too much for eight must do to go to heaven. <laughs> Swami, can you have a shorter version? But Swami is very kind. He said, okay. One day, I'll give you short, something shorter. Baba gives a fast, fast track. Now, 
the those days, you know, coffee you would fly the fly the beans, you know, and then you find now instant coffee. Everyone can instant moksha. Swami very kind, okay, instant, instant coffee. He says, now I give you three now. Eight reduced to three. Ah, Swami, very good. What's the three? What is the three? Deva Preeti. Keep this in mind. This is very, very beautiful words. Deva Preeti means love God. Pavabhiti, fear sin. What the other one? I see somebody nodding. Sangha Niti, promoting morality in Islam. That's all. But what is love God? See everybody, oh, you go to altar and say, Baba, Baba, I love you, Baba, so much, Baba, I love you. I hate the other fellow, but Baba, I love you. That is not love God. The love of God should be universal consciousness of love for everyone. That is great love God. You cannot say other God, I don't love that That's what's happening now. In temples and churches, how much fighting going on. Maybe not here, but other countries. <laughs> fear sin. Why should anybody fear sin? Normally when people are sinning, they're enjoying it, you know. They enjoy it, you know, they want to sin. Well, you know what, I won't go and define what sin is. They enjoy it. Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Mada, Matsyala, you know. The six enemies. Do you know the Bhagavad Gita they talk about? One day I was in the Lakshminan temple in Malaysia. And I used to go and talk in the Lakshminan temple. Okay? And Lakshminan temple they have a, on the wall of the temple verses from the Gita. And I'm looking around, I saw one of, one of the verses there, you know. The Krishna talks about the three gateways to hell. So I by the way, how many of you know the three gateways to hell? Hey, hello. You all have written the walls away from the center, all the messages here. How come you come every day, you all don't, don't, don't show The Pope has written something nice for you, you to read, not for God to read. It. And I say, you better know what the three gateways there are. Because you know, sir, how do you know you are actually opening the gate, okay? So very interesting. The Gita has talked about three gateways to hell. You know, Kama, Krodha, Lola. Three. But the Veda has talked about six. I'll talk about it in some other end of the session. So, when they are sitting and joining, then why should you fear sin? Everybody's fear that when you're talking bad about someone, you think you're suffering, <laughs> you're enjoying it. It makes you feel good. When you do. So, how do you work that? Why should you fear sin? Fear the karmic consequence of sin. That is what we should fear. Anybody is. You do something wrong today, you need to murder or steal. Hand of God doesn't come and knock your head. Okay? If hand of God comes and knocks our head for every bad thought we have, for every bad uh, words we speak, every bad action we do, you may have, you say, you say, you say, you All will become perfect over night. And the whole world will dissolve, mankind will moksha straight away, and God has no other work to do. So he doesn't give the punishment straight away. Every time you do something, you walk through life, imagine now your life, you know, like a city is a pendulum in front of you. As you walk through life, negative, you see, you do something bad, then you might make nothing hitting you. You know, at the pendulum swing swinging there, you, then something good you might do, you say. Then you know, another bad thing you do. Hey, Nothing happening, I did so much, I went to work, I did cheat, and nothing happening. Wow, it's okay, God doesn't know. Pendulum is coming back. And tomorrow you do something good. The fellow will come, the negative will come, bam, hit you, you know. Are you, I was going to the temple and my car had accident. Then the other fellow said, see, I told you don't go to the temple simply. <laughs> <laughs> We are not done, if you, not because of the temple, the hell that kill you. The accident that could have killed you. So, the other day is, fear the consequence of sin. It doesn't hit you directly, it will come to you 100%. You can't avoid it. Sangha Nidhi, 
Morality, so say what that mean? Baba says, morality is one thing. Baba gave a definition of morality here. He said, when you know there are people in need, when you know people are crying to God for help, and you have, you have the ability to go and help them, either individuals or groups, and you do not do it, that is divine immorality. That's the definition of morality. When you know people in need, when you know people are desperate and crying, either because they are sad or whether they are lonely, whatever the reason may be, and we have the ability to help, and we do not invoke the ability to help, that is divine immortality. So only three, what's so difficult about this? Love God. How to love God? Because I want to condemn the other one. Fear sin. Why should I fear sin when I am enjoying it? These three let us remember. Nine code is what we do. Then he gave another three. The very next one. Satyam Bruyat. You all know this? What's the second one? Priyam Bruyat. Third one. Na Bruyat Satyam Apriyam. These are beautiful sayings. Speak the truth. Speak with love. Ah, very good. Like a friend who told me, like I told me straight in his face. Speak the truth. What like you have? What kind of harmony you play in the music? He tell the truth. And told the truth. What like you sang, you know, your city all off. Speak the truth. That sari you are wearing, huh? that time you are wearing. <laughs> First time, the three times. <laughs> Like a simple nonsense in things again. Speak telling the text, speak the truth. But here, speak the truth. Next, speak with love. The third one, na buryat satyama priyam. That means never speak in unpalatable or unloving truth. Never speak a truth that hurts and demeans another person. Then how to correct someone? How to correct someone? Are we doing wrong? How to correct them? The tabla play is not playing properly. If you are going to tell you not to know what to do. Ah. The Baba says, Baba gave me a minute. He says, he told the Bhagavad Gurus once, before you chastise a child, it's called the child, make sure you praise him twice. Always then he gets up. So, for example, let's see now this young man here. What's your name, sir? Huh? Nama. Nama. Supposing now, this, what's your name? Ash. Supposing Ash has never spoken Dhamma in any kind of words at all. Always, you know, Ash is very hostile. And he comes only to Naman and says, Hey Naman, hey, Ash, Naman, not like you, know, you play, you're not so good. You know. What Naman is? The father's Dhamma. I know. Why you go even Dhamma? It's called the flower shape. Why? Because he never knew any love. But if this gentleman here, Naman, what's your name, what's your name, sir? Vishal. Why you say, mm, Vishal? <laughs> Okay, Vishal. But Naman and Vishal are the friends. They love each other. And uh, Vishal always prays Naman or whatever. One day Vishal goes with us, Naman, Naman. I think you're not playing so well. Naman says, yes, Vishal. Okay, how I can improve that? You see, the love will make the thing work. So therefore, before we criticize someone or condemn someone, make sure the person knows you love him. Then the person will accept it. You have never talked to anyone in a before problem in a nice way. You won't talk to them, they will contact me, they will get very angry. So this is very simple course of life today. Of never satyam, na bhrim satyam never speak in unfaltable truth. Let's say now what, uh, uh, what, uh, what's his second man's name again? Aish, Aish. Aish now really wants to help this fellow improve the traveling. He knows that if he speaks to what uh, Raman, so what is how smart the smart man is what we do? He is going to tell Vishal. 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 If I want to tell him, he will get angry. Vishal, you tell him that. So he achieved the same objective. They achieved the same objective without negativity. That's one thing. That's what the whole thing is about. How do we move in the world? This is all Swami's basic teachings in our devotees. It's not so difficult to put into practice in all this. Now, so, you know, I, I don't know what Sanskrit means. 
And I'm very difficult to remember all this. I'm getting older and older and I can't even remember all this. So what I do, Swami, Swami, how do I remember Satyam Bhuyat, Priyam Bhuyat, Naam Bhuyat, Satyam Aapriyam, how do I know all this? So what I do, Swami will somehow one next day, two days later, one song will come. So then I, so all these things I convert to songs, that number. So this is song now, Satyam Bhuyat. Are we ready? Gentlemen, my orchestra. <laughs> Satyam Bruya. Satyam Bruya. Priyam Bruya. Priyam Bruya. You know why I say it slowly? So give me a chance to catch a Sudhi. <laughs> in the center, in the high center, in the yeah, everybody is singing this song. So first, first two or three lines I'll say very slowly. Just to give the, 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 the prominent player the time to catch the Sati. Satyam Bruya Because I tell you, I, 
I don't, I'm not embarrassed at all by that, okay? Because Swami, you know, some, I do an experiment in Buddha. What I do, I wait, Swami is giving a speech, you know. Two hours, Swami, thunder, you know, and I'm come on, translating, oh, no, 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 I, then, after the speech, two hours, okay, I wait for about two or three hours. Then I go to ask somebody, what is that? Hey, sister, how was Swami's speech? Oh, you know, fantastic. Swami, Swami spoke. Tears came to my eyes, you know. Say, see, you are very good. Very beautiful, you know, Swami said, yes, very yes, good. Yes, yes. What he said? What he said? Same thing, Nanda, also, never, never. Everybody gets caught in the emotion of Swami's form, not the devotion of his message. That's a big, big problem we have. You get caught in the emotion of the form, not the devotion in the message. Swami is giving us. That's a challenge to face. So, you don't know what I say, you don't worry, nothing. Swami is a body. <laughs> First one, I am sad. Okay, second one. Oh, sorry. Second one. Wow! Sure, Indriya Nidham. Very good, Sanskrit. Now, third one. Oh, Sarva Buddha Daya. Very good. Compassion to all and all things. Okay. You see, this is this. Hey, brother, Ravi, problem here. You all get in moksha the next time, okay? <laughs> Shama, forgiveness, okay? Compare for me. Five. Shanti. Six. Six. Tapas. Brother, the hall has been empty after that, I'm scared. Seven. What? Yana. Meditation. Eight. Wow, Satya. All you have to do is put a shot, put into your into your mobile phone this, this thing. So when you go to a temple next time or Sai Santa, just stand there. Swami, flower one after you. Left from your heart, when you offer, you can offer flower, no problem. In Malaysia, what I do, I tell the devotees who when you offer him flowers, don't in many temples and all these places, no, people don't offer flower to God. They chuck flowers. This one is the help me from me, fulfill ahimsa, offer the ahimsa. Help me from me, offer control of senses. Don't know that not knowing the sense, but put it in English with now. God understands English. <laughs> you know God understands Bhasa in Indonesia. In Bali, all are Hindus. You know. They don't speak Tamil or anything, they speak English and English. So this is the second okay, sex one, next one, huh? Then, those who can eat, now let us try the compassion and three. Deva? Hello? Deva Preeti. Meaning? Love Baba? For that. Yes, sir. Three. Sangha? What are things like? Hey. Brother, it's getting more and more dangerous now. You are remembering all this. Then, now the other three. Please, forget it. Okay, Cynthia. No? I'm just joking. You can forget about it. Satyam. Next one. Priyam. All together. That is the most important. Okay. Now, Bhuliyat Satya Mahaprabhu means never tell an unloving, unpalatable truth. If you do that, your life is harmonious, you won't fight anybody. Let the other fellows tell some nonsense to you. You see, someone in the train is shouting at you, don't go and jump in the train. Stand there and help her to come out if you can. Anybody is. For the those who cannot remember and practice even this three, Yes, there is still salvation, don't worry. They don't get anywhere. All the 
masters in front of number three. All the admin adults, program three, the school salvation is something I am guaranteed. I am guaranteed it. That is expert. <laughs> That's how you so much, but like always, the Bible I must tell you, there's all these brilliant, brilliant things you see on the, on the all these figures, all these monkeys and all this that. It's the work of my wife, okay? She does all these things. I'm just, I just give the words to say, she creates the magic. Like a monkey, huh? Eh? Mm. Everybody is. <laughs> For those who find all these people, Follow only one thing in life. I tell now I'm addressing all the youth and all those living here. That is something all is too difficult to do. The final shortcut, the ultimate inner transformation. Honor your father and mother as they are. Revere them and make them happy. That's all. Revere them and make them That's the simplest, simplest way. I'll be talking about this in more detail when I have the session with you. Maybe I'll have a session, I'll have another session, all the talks are Hope you manifest a great inner transformation. As far as parents are concerned, everybody is. I tell you, by, don't forget everybody, I will tell you this. I was an atheist. Some of you know my story. I was an atheist until 32 years of my life. My mother was a great devotee of God, my uncles all, and I was surrounded by people of devotion. But I, why did I become an atheist? Because none of them could tell me what in heaven's name is happening in Hindu temple. Where could I learn? Rela. Why is it how to kill the rat and feed the rat? Here they know rats, sir. Are the rats in the house? Oh, in Malaysia, there are rats now. I'm talking about not the human ones, animal ones. <laughs> why are you doing that? Why, why, why? Why are you putting it in? Don't know. Why are you putting it in? Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. So don't know anything. And not in, that's why I launched this huge program called Tribe. Because I understood one thing. Why did I become an atheist? Why did I move away? Because I could not tolerate the nonsense that we just blind faith and nothing. This is like you go to Hindu temple, what do you see? You see a bull, you see a cow, you see a peacock, you see a snake, the whole zoo is there. And no one knows what the zoo is doing here. So imagine now, instead in this world, now at least India is so obvious. So what a pervasive Hinduism, no one asks questions. Whatever you think. But now in other countries outside, Malaysia, Australia, all the world, all asking questions. You can't say no one. Imagine now, imagine the situation. Your child in school, three years, four years, five years, six years old, forget six years old, even the young young adults, their friends come to them, not like you, great elephant, you know, great rat. Why? Your child, seven years old child comes home, Amma, Amma, no need to go to Amma, 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 your children, I'm talking about them. Future, not now, future. <laughs> My friend in school are teasing me, Amma. They say, I'm so stupid. Break the elephant, break the rat. Amma, Amma, why do you need to spread the elephant, Amma? Mother will say, 99% of all mothers, except those here, will say, <laughs> Dying? No one told you that? No one, no one told me. No one explained to you? No one, no one. Ask Papa. <laughs> Papa, I think he's a lawyer, doctor, he's a smart lawyer. Papa, Papa, why do you need to spread the elephant God, Papa? You are, you are the future Papa, sir. Then, don't ask stupid questions, okay? Papa, play Amma, Ati, Gare. In the school, they are told, ask question, ask question, ask question. Come home, don't ask questions. Dear brother, sister, the graveyard of Hinduism, that is the home of Hinduism. The graveyard of most religions have been done in their own homes. More, not only Hinduism, every religion. People are asking questions. No one can answer. So this is the challenge. Islam, Buddhism, Christianity. 
people are asking questions and are unable to answer these questions to satisfy the modern scientific mind. So they never did. That is why I have launched this program of hope where it is not no more Father's Day, Mother's Day. Father's Day, Mother's 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 Day, what I do? Father's Day, the boy will buy, buy a car from the shop. Father's Day car, the girls will buy a Mother's Day car. And then they put that, Dear Papa. It's a poem written by someone else. Idiots can't write one word, sorry. So not you, remember that. And then they buy, Dear Papa, I love you. Then one purse, Papa. Happy Father's Day! Who <laughs> have you? I go. What? The year, you know, remember in the, then the father will know, mother will take the car and put on top of the, 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 the TV set. You know, yeah. guess sound, you know? <laughs> <laughs> My mother, son, daughter came me. Father's day car. Mother's day car. This is nonsense. So today we learn something called the hope agenda. We'll talk about this in the session we'll come out later. Yeah, on with a massive session, you know, the massive vision and so on. So, this is the greatest inner transformation. And I was an atheist. No one will answer this question. Then when I came and I became uh, what, uh, 32 years old, 32 years old, I asked for 32. 32 years old, I heard of a Swami and I became a strong anti -sider. I was a vicious, not, not a disbeliever, I was a proactive anti cyber That means my wish, my, my joy in life has destroyed another person's ridiculous notion. That avatar walking in the water, hey, what is that? God is imagination, avatar double imagination. <laughs> then they'll tell me that he can neutralize nothing but a big wave of his hand. And that's why I wear long sleeves, you know, what is that? Then then Vibhuti comes in his pictures. So I'll go to some homes and all the Maybe not here so much, but you don't get so much dust. In Malaysia, and you go and you rub. You rub any picture on the wall, what do you get? What do you get? That's, hey, don't clean your house one week. A lot of people you'll get, okay? <laughs> this was my attitude. Now, during one of the sessions, I had a chance to tell you what happened. But how many of you have heard the story, how I became about it? How many have not heard? Uh, I wrote a book so then I will read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this, this is the great challenge we face today. No? So now I tell them, nowadays when I go to funerals, no? I see these youngsters, one father, one boy, I tell them, Oh, Papa! Oh, Papa! Oh, Amma! I feel like slapping the idiot. Because when the father and mother are alive, they never care. Now suddenly they are crying. So I tell about nonsense. So today a message to all the those who have parents living. Message is this. Sir, instruments. Don't cry for them when they are gone. Sudhi.
I said, tell me, from the age of 21, I ran the government service, 22, ran the government service. I was telling around the world, the businessmen, they, that, the prime minister, ministers, that was a superstar that I had in my government. Overseas, people have done any nonsense. But before I do anything, I'm in fact, I'm invited to join in a lot of nonsense only. I asked myself, if I do it, mother, mother will happy. Even though she doesn't, doesn't matter. Mother happy, mother happy. Mother happy. She was my, my guiding light. She was the divine force in the family. Little did I realize that the grace I was getting, my mother's, God's grace pouring to me through, through, through mother. I mean, I tell them, I was an Indian in Malaysia after May 13th, I don't know if you know the rights where. We were superstars, everybody on the way has touch anything will happen. Touch anything will happen. How is it happening? Government, Muslim, everybody respect our name. Even the economic risk is the turn of the trailer. How is it? I then realize it's God's grace that's flowing to me through mother. I didn't have, I didn't have father. My father passed away when I was seven years old. So those of you who are father and mother alive, thank God they are alive. You know the problem today? Maybe we'll talk about the next time. The problem today. But this is the rest of the I can think of only one thing. How can I make my father and mother happy? Well, they, are they thanking God that I am their son and daughter? Or are they, thank, are they crying to God? God, why are you punishing me? No great philosophy required here. No great extreme sadhana, fasting, anything other than that. Yes, there.
you really follow the path of patience. Satyam Priya, Priyam Priya, Naha Priya, Satyam Priya, Deva Priya, Paka Priya, Sangha Priya, and Anaya Kadaya. That's it. Okay, I think we are waiting for lunch or something. Um, I am sure that you see the notes all that. I hope this session has been useful to you, understanding the basic framework of Swami's basic teachings. Was it useful? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I'm afraid it's afternoon session also. <laughs> In the afternoon session, uh, well, I'm going to cover three topics today. But this session will be heavy in terms of uh, Swami's solid teachings. Now. Second session will be much more lighter, much more humorous. This session will be humorous as well. A bit more humorous, and uh, you will possibly enjoy it. What's the session about the afternoon? The afternoon session. Where? The afternoon session. Ah, one is drops of the ocean. Basically, what I'm trying to do here is that Swami's old teachings are such a vast ocean. Somebody told me now the movement is expanding. Now outreach is going up. Somebody comes and asks, "Hey, who is Sai? What is Baba teaching? What do you going to tell me?" So I'm going to give you five drops of the ocean. That's all. Second one is Sharana, surrender. This is a very funny thing. But what is the meaning of surrender? The third is Dharma versus Adharma. This is an extremely funny thing. So I'm making the atmosphere a bit light, okay? Um, then, how many of you here, by the way, this is just a curiosity, came into Sai mission after Mahasamadhi? We have not had direct contact with Swami. Hmm. Sir, my Yamani man, you didn't put up for the first or second. <laughs> <laughs> you had a direct contact. You had Talking, that's what I mean. Yeah. So in the afternoon session, I'm going to, how many of you experienced Swami's miracles? Have seen Swami's miracles? Oui, so, many of you. so I can skip the session, right? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll show you some incredible miracles, Swami. But for me, more important now is what you know. Not the miracle of size. Swami can do miracles, what is that? It's God. Can devote it to miracles. I call this a miracle of self devotion. Mind boggling stuff. These words, thank you very much. Sai Ram. Pacham annam chetur vidham 
Shanti, 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 Shanti.